will notice when this has been recorded in the uh, day that this is going out on the channel. Eager Beaver. Um, but I realise that we've got quite a few games. I've got quite a few games in my Steam library and I thought it'd be quite cool to actually do a little bit of a tour video, a little tour of my Steam library. And just talk about some of the games that we've uh, got on here. Got on here kind of like a whisper ramble that I thought that could be pretty fun. So if that sounds up your street, then yeah, yeah, stick your headphones on, kick back, chillax, and uh, yeah, unwind with me as we chat about some some games. Uh, let me know down below what you're currently playing at the moment, and if you are new, I hit that sub sub I can't actually speak <laughs> that subscribe button in. sort of plugs for now. Let's plug into this video. So I've got 30 games in my um, Steam library, although only one game um, is actually installed. Um, but going in sort of alphabetical order, we've got Comedy Nights. So this is a really cool game. I've not played it bloody hell since the 28th of February 2018. So uh, five years ago was when I last played this. And I basically just remember a load of funny YouTube videos coming up about this game and it's basically like a, a lobby, like loads of different lobbies and you form part of the audience and you and you can go on stage and you basically tell jokes to other people. Um, and it's all just user generated if you know what I mean. The, the game is purely just like the environment and you can create your person just going on, I think there's different sort of themed lobbies depending on the jokes and stuff, um, but I just remember it being quite funny. It is one of those where it was sort of quite good fun when it was popular, but as soon as it started to lose sort of the hype and the novelty, it was a bit, um, bit crap. Also open to a lot of, um, yeah, uh, dodgy stuff, but uh, yeah, a funny game. We've then got Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Um, last played this bloody hell 2016 and only for about an hour. I've never really, I've never been a Counter Strike player. My mate Hardy, big Counter Strike player, who you may know from the Four Lads and a Topic podcast, available on the full season. It's available on Spotify uh, and uh, sort of Apple Podcasts. But yeah, never really got into uh, Counter Strike. It just never was my sort of cup of tea. But I know um, people were big fans of it. And it's really popular still to this day. And then we've got Don't Starve. Now, I've actually played this game a lot more than Steam is letting on because I've also played it on the Xbox a great deal. And the PlayStation, I've been playing on the PS4 a fair bit. And we've actually done, um, back at the very start of this channel, there was a series called Late Night Ramble and one of them was over footage of this game so if you want to check that out it's probably 2016 but don't starve it is a brilliant game it's a, basically a survival uh, survival game where you have to use your environment to craft food and craft items so you can craft items scavenge for food and uh, build shelter it's kind of like a more survivalist minecraft but in a to describe the art style, but it's beautiful. Um, the sort of the, the sort of like the hand drawn, the hand drawn um, sort of style, and there's lots of secrets to uncover. And they've done a lot of um, DLC. So you've got Don't Star Shipwrecked, um, Reign of Giants. I think was the big one. So that came out in 2014. Shipwrecked 2015. Hamlet. Don't Star Hamlet was 2018. So you know they're keeping the game up. Um, up to date even now and they actually came out with a co-op version but that's um, yeah very good fun that maybe I could do a maybe I could do a, um, a sort of a let's play of that we could bring that back let me know um, we've then got a load of football managers so I've got football manager 2019 a football manager 2020 played almost bloody hell 100 hours on it 50 hours on Football Manager 2019 and um, oh, I've only put 10 hours into um, 21 
really do enjoy Football Manager. It's one of those, it's sort of a simulator, not like FIFA where you actually play the matches. It's far more of a, an analytical sim, a football sim, basically. Um, you know, where you pick a team and you pick the squad and you do the tactics and uh, contracts and stuff like that. Really good fun. I always pick Huddersfield, like Guam Town. Um, but it's one of those games where it's they kind of like um, of a turn-based games where you just like one more turn, one more turn. You're like, yes, let's. Uh, but the equivalent is where you skip to the next day for things to populate. Um, really, really good fun. Um, I've never been overly successful. I actually, took uh, Carlisle United to the championship uh, from League Two to uh, yeah to the championship. So pretty good going. We've then got Good Robot, so Good Robot, I've played for approximately 15 minutes, uh, eight years ago. Um, I was actually sort of gifted this game, um, the company were, yes, my, were like, oh, do you want to play it? And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a, give it a go, I don't really, yeah, you, it was kind of like an, ex, an exploratory game, I go select the resolution, um, I don't really have too much to say on it, really. Um, Grand Theft Auto V, um, that game is sort of self-explanatory. I never, again, this was gifted to me years and years ago, but I never actually installed it and played it just because I never, my laptop was never really able to play games like this. Um, GTA, do enjoy GTA. Remember when it came out in 2013, I think it was. Um, I just love going to the airport and nicking planes. It's my favourite thing to do in Grand Theft Auto. Uh, be interested to see when GTA 6 comes out. They're the sort of games I really want to give a proper go this time around. So GTA, yeah, the new GTA. I want to give the new uh, Elder Scrolls game a proper go. These big RPG games I've just never previously gone into. You know, the likes of the Fallout series. There. We've then got Heaven Island, which is a virtual reality MMO. Um, played it for three minutes, um, day before New Year's Eve. Um, yeah, I don't know. When was this? Uh, there's no recent activity. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't really have much to say. Ah, oh, Jackbox. We have this installed. Ah, uh, Jackbox Party Pack free. <laughs> Um, Jackbox is awesome, it's got a load of different uh, games in, but the one that I've played and really enjoy uh, is Quiplash, which is a really cool game where um, you basically, you, know, you each sort of sign in on your phone and connect to the server, and it then it has a series of questions where two people go head to head in anonymous anonymously submitting a, a, an answer to the question and then the rest of the group votes on which they think is the best answer obviously descends into debauchery kind of like it's kind of like cards uh, cards against humanity but um, sort of digitized um, really good fun i've not played um the other ones though We've got Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. Spent significantly longer on Left 4 Dead 2 than I did on Left 4 Dead 1. Again, these are both games I played on the Xbox 360 um, predominantly, and then I then later got it for Steam to play with. I had to play with my mate. Um, Left 4 Dead, brilliant, fantastic game uh, made by Valve. Completely created a whole new, uh, not whole new, but sort of uh, sort of survival, sort of arcade zombie survival game and the multiplayer was excellent because you could play as the sort of co-op, the four survivors, uh, which was Bill, Zoe, Bill, Zoe, Frank, Bill, Zoe, Frank. Oh, I don't know who the last bloke's called, Sean, um, Shane, uh, I'm not sure. And the weapons were really cool. Um, but you also had like a spit, uh, you had a, no you didn't have a spitter, you had a smoker, you had a boomer, you had a witch, um, and yeah, and each level, each campaign, so it's like four campaigns, but it's like a movie, so each movie you're in, you're, um, trying to get somewhere to, uh, evacuate, and each kind of level, you're trying to get from A to B, and it's one big journey to get to where the movie's sort of based and the extraction point. So like this one, which is a hospital, and you have to get to the top of the hospital to escape. Um, and as you're going through um, these different, you get zombies, but you also get different, the 
special zombies like the boomers, which sort of vomit a bile that attracts the horde, uh, smokers, which have a, a tongue, which when it sort of wraps around you, sort of pulls you uh, away from the group and damages you, and so, and you've got med packs, and you've got sort of pills that sort of temporarily restore your health, you've got Molotov cocktails, you've got bite bombs, it's epic. Left 4 Dead 2 built on this, though, new weapons, more melee weapons, uh, they had a chainsaw, which is really, really cool. Um, different, and they had different types of special zombie types, the sort of premise remained the same, getting from A to B in different sort of movie-like campaigns. But yeah, really, really good. Uh, they added a jockey, which jumps on you and tracks you away, and the really cool thing about the multiplayer is when you're playing as the zombies, uh, you do the infected, you don't want them, you don't want the, the, the heroes to get their new players, you can play as these special zombie types, so you can work together to try, say if you're a jockey, jump on an enemy, uh, or you know, survive and drag them into the path of, say, one of your mates who's playing as a, a different sort of zombie type. You've also got a tank, which is a big, big guy, and a spitter, which spits a silly bile. Yeah, really, really good game. Then you've got Bubba G, um, the sort of the, not the OG, I suppose, uh, Daisy was, I suppose, but the OG um, Battle Royale. <laughs> Played a hundred, hundred hours on this, mainly with uh, my mate Will, again of the Flat Podcast. Um, we used to play this after work all the time. Um, just jump on in duos, and we eventually, it took us hours and hours, but we eventually managed to get a few wins, and I actually played mouse and keyboard, because usually I plug a controller in, but I actually did mouse and keyboard, and yeah, managed to, managed to win. I remember our first victory, it was, uh, you just, like, it's just surreal. I did really enjoy PUBG, they then made PUBG mobile, and that was a bit crap, and so it's sort of dying to death now, with the likes of, you know, Fortnite, Warzone, um, and Apex Legends. They've just got a load of different servers. Um, Civilization, 122 hours in how much on Civ 6? 40 hours. Um, yeah, Civ 5, one of the best um, turn based strategy games. Um, I've got countless hours, 122 to be precise, hours of playing Civ 5 with my mates. You know, four or five of us would hop on on a you know, Saturday evening. And we'd play. Um, the game would eventually crash once you got to the modern era. Um, and it'd be impossible to get back in, but we had some massive games. And it'd be a race to get nukes. There would be lots of secret treaties where I would you know, be working with one friend, uh, sort of clandestinely, um, to attack our friend, or other friend. But we'd put, like, because uh, the in game messaging was really cool, because you could, like, send a message to all players or a private message. And, you know, we'd pretend. Message in the main chat that we'd uh, that we pretended was actually meant to be a private chat. So it'd be like, oh, oh, well, now's the time to attack Hardy, and it'd be like, oh, oops, it's in the main chat. Um, really, really good game. Civ Six built on it. Civ Six built on it and changed the way, um, changed quite a few of the fundamentals, especially in the city building aspect. In Civ Five, all your city development was within a tile. In Civilization VI, you had districts which were um, sort of tile manifestations adjacent to your city, but not within the city uh, tile itself, and therefore placement and city management became more of a, an important factor, um, especially from a defensive point of view. Um, really good game, they changed the art style a bit, but quite liked it. Uh, but overall, Civilization is a cracking game. South Park, uh, the stick of truth, I have completed this, I believe, back um, in 2016, uh, nine hours, very much enjoyed it, it was, I do enjoy South Park, well, I enjoyed it as a teenager, I've not watched it for a, a, a little while, but the game was really good, a really well-made show adaptation into a video game, and they kept the, all the humour of South Park and the jokes. Um, uh, but I had like a, it was a really solid RPG to be fair. Really enjoyed. Was there any DLC? I came out for it. Um, yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, no, enjoyed it. Uh, the Hunter Call for the Wild. This was a random pickup by again the Flat Podcast guys. We were trying to find a different game to play from Siege. Um, last played of 2020, played a couple hours, um, and you basically play as Huntsman, but you can 
reviewing one environment hunting, but it was just, I don't know, it just wasn't that great. Um, uh, quite funny. Shot a bear, which was quite fun. So Rainbow Six Siege, last time I played today, when I was doing the uh, Siege video, I uh, played for nearly 310 hours, quite a few hours. And yeah, this was, this was definitely sort of lockdown, COVID, uh, the game we all played together, brilliant. Countless hours trying to play ranked, uh, very funny memories. Uh, we chat our favourite operators. I really enjoy Maverick, um, Maverick and Echo um, from the Attack and Defender. But yeah, really, really good. Um, just really good game, and that's another game where it's a they turned it into seasons, but it's really, really strong. And I presume and I believe it's sort of a really strong player base because the fundamentals of the game are really good, and when you communicating with your, um, your mates and playing tactically, tactfully, it's just really cool and when you put strategies in place and just really good fun. Test server, oh, Splinter Cell Blacklist, um, not played this for years, I completed it originally on the Xbox 360, I played for all of six minutes on the, on Steam. This was really good, this was part of the sort of Splinter Cell, I've actually got, have I got an unboxing on the channel? No, I don't think so. Um, this was part of the sort of Splinter Cell re rebrand that kind of went in the sort of mid-2010s where you had Splinter Cell Conviction and then Splinter Cell Blacklist and really, really good fun. And the good thing about Blacklist was cool because you could navigate missions, have a completely stealth, completely balls to the wall action or a mix of both. And really, really cool and they had a really cool execution maneuver where once you built up enough, I don't know what the gauge was, you could then target like bing, 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 three enemies and then it was like, shoo, shoo, shoo. really cool. Um, yeah, enjoyed that game a lot. Total War, this is, these are games I loved as a kid. I never had a PC back in the early 2000s to be able to play Total War. My cousin, every time I went to my cousin's house, He'd be playing Total War Rome, and I was obsessed with the scale of it on the PC. You know, how you'd have um, a load of the Egyptians storming, again, you know, historically inaccurate, storming this Roman fortification. You'd have archers. I was obsessed with archers. And the scale of the battlefields. And I remember, you know, my dad got me medieval Total War, but we couldn't play on any of the computers because we didn't have the. It just wasn't powerful enough. And then I like to gossip um, in uh, adult life. Um, good fun. And the same with Total War Rome too. These two are really good. I also had Shogun, uh, Total War Shogun, which was really cool as well. I was just the Japan Japanese one. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed Total War Rome as well. Um, really, really good. They've now got Total War um, so Warhammer, which is apparently really good as well. Really, really fun, fun games. Town of Salem. So this was what I played this at uni with my mates I went to school with for a little while. It's a strange game. It's um, basically so the um, sort of uh, the Salem Witch Trials. It's kind of like um, not Wink Murder, but kind of like the Mafia game. So the you get randomly assigned a role. And each role has a different abilities, but they're split into sort of like good guys and bad guys. Um, and it's what you need to do is essentially work out who the bad guys are, and the, the majority need to vote on that bad guy to execute them. It's kind of like Among Us with the uh, pretty sus, um, with the, the voting mechanic of who you think's evil and needs to be cast out. And at night is where the bad guys can actually act. We had a load of different character types which had different skills, which meant you could do different things. You could like, you could go, you know, murder someone, but you could bring someone back. You could talk to someone who, who died and they could give you information. And it's just really, really good fun. Um, definitely worth checking out. I think it's like three, four quid if people are still playing it. Good fun. Never played Undertale. I know, I think some of you may be like, whoa, have you never played Undertale? But I know, I know, I know. Um, just never really played it. It's only 155 megabytes. That's, that's mental. Um, and the 
the same with ukulele, just never, never installed it. Um, I think I got it when it was really, really cheap, but um, yeah, never, never played it. Um, from the makers of um, Banjo Kazooie, I believe, uh, from Rare. Um, but yeah, that's my um, sort of Steam library, just a quick whistle stop tour. Um, yeah, quite a few interesting games. Let me know on there if there are any games on there that you really like or you'd like to see us play on the channel more than happy. Um, to make some videos on that, that'd be awesome. But yeah, just a bit of an insight into my gaming collection digitised. So, I do hope you enjoy, uh, enjoyed this video. Like I say, if you did, I, I mean a lot. If you could leave it a little like, it just helps, I believe. I don't know the algorithm, but you know, you get told to say it. Um, but yeah, really, I just hope you enjoyed this video and really, really appreciate you spending your time watching, um, you know, watching along and listening with me. It's, uh, you know, time is the, the greatest resource, most precious resource we all have. So for you to spend it with, uh, with myself, that really does mean a lot. So that's going to be all from me. So lots of love as always, my friend. Thank <laughs> you.